up guys welcome back to whiskey website wednesdays this is episode 14 my name is mira i am the social media manager here at outside the box i put my hand down gauche is here and we have our special guest trevor burnett you may remember him for from a few episodes ago and she can't do a double tape because we are live so uh we you already know who we are trevor do you want to give us a a little introduction of who you are and what we will be drinking today. Sure, I'm what you would call a spirits ambassador. So I kind of specialize in with bringing ghosts? with ghosts sometimes. Spirit. I've met a few ghosts, but that's a whole other story. Okay. But spirits in terms of, you know, whiskey, gin, rum, all cross categories. But as we all know, this is Whiskey Wednesday. Yeah. So my job is to talk about whiskey. Of course, I brought in a rum, which makes which is totally, so makes, get it. totally makes sense, right? I don't get it. But I will explain to you why it is important to know about rum and whiskey and how they are both intertwined, yeah. related, interrelated. Yeah, interrelated. Yeah, cousins. Interrelated. Like cousins. Yeah. Cousins. I, I guess. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Did you want me? Uh, I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this is called El Dorado Twenty One, often referred to as the whiskey of the Caribbean. Oh dang. All right. Can you smell that? Smells yes. Right. Ooh. 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 It smells um smooth. It buttery. smells smooth. It smells buttery. Okay, it smells buttery. All right, so I'm gonna do a splash, a wee dram, if you will, if we were speaking in. It's a darker Scottish rum. Scottish terms. This is a darker rum. You know what? Try it. with a lot of spirits, right? You don't necessarily want to name it a dark rum. Classify it by color. Okay. You know, just like people, right? You want to classify it by what it is. This is an aged rum. Okay. okay. I guess I'm an aged person. So uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Ladies first. Gouch. Oh, <laughs> snap. I'm joking. Damn. I'm just, Damn. I'm just, I'm just passing it along. All right. So this is El Dorado, 21-year-old. All right. We're going to do what we did the last time. We're going to take a look at it in the glass. All right. Over the white piece of paper? Yeah. You remember. Yes. Yeah. 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 Beautiful color, right? What color would you describe that as? Amber. Dark amber, amber right? Yeah. yeah. All right. And then we're going to do a little nose in. And we do the same thing as last time where we go. Yeah, exactly. I've been practicing. Good. <laughs> that was all right. That was good. That was good. All right. That's smooth. That's all right, huh? Ooh. Now, you want to try it with a little spoonful of water. All right? That's a good way to measure. Okay. There's two drops. That was, that was like a black color. Okay. All right. That's what you want. Okay. Sure. All right. And what are some of the notes that we should be smelling? Because I'm still trying to elevate my palate. All right. Well, listen. You tell me. What do you, what do you feel? Especially after you add a little splash of water. It opens it up a little more. I smell... I on the no, there's no <laughs> no cheese. No cheese. All right, I would say molasses. Okay. You know, it was like, oh. what, what do we cook with that's in this molasses? Caramel, like, caramel, and caramel a little bit, or butterscotch perhaps. Is there a bit of honey in this? Honey is a good way to. There's no honey in it, but, but like, the it's notes. A honey note? Yeah. Honey notes. Honey notes, sweeter notes. Okay. But not not sugary, syrupy, sweet. No, you know, no, no. Tropical, you know. I smell a bit of H2O. You have some water. water. <laughs> you smell water, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what, why, 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 why do we have a I have no, because eye candy. <laughs> Maybe. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's way sweeter now. Yeah, you see, so oh adding that little bit of water really yeah. does make a difference yeah. when you're talking about whiskeys and rums. Yeah. So, that's one of the things I want to explain about how they're interrelated. The way you sip them are very similar. Mm -hmm. The only difference is rum is more versatile in terms of you can cook with it, mm -hmm. you can bake with it, you can use it to glaze, make, you know, make like rib sauce. Yeah. But you can also sip it and mix it in cocktails. Whereas Scotch whiskey, because I know you guys do a lot of Scotch whiskey, you don't hear a lot of cocktails mixed in. Mm -hmm. It's mostly thought of as something that you sip. Yeah. But a lot of people also don't know that rums can be sipped in a similar fashion yeah, as whiskey. For sure. And so the same thing, a splash of water with a bit of soda on the rocks with the whiskey rocks mm -hmm. that you guys had, the maize balls. Yeah. Yes. Right? 
But what's similar is this is a blended rum, right? And so you've got, sometimes you have single malts, and then you also have blended whiskeys. Yeah. But the blending process is very similar with rum and whiskey. So with whiskey, you usually have um, malted barley and grain that are mixed. The malted barley gives you the flavor, and the grain is kind of what um, kind of lengthens it, let's just say. It's the lighter flavor of the spirit. With rum, you have you can also have different styles of rum that are mixed together in the same way that you blend the whiskey. Mm -hmm. The barrels that they use to make you know, rums, but especially El Dorado, are American bourbon, oak, right? Okay. Same thing with the scotch companies. So what happens with bourbon, they use the barrels once, then it's discarded. You can't re-age in a barrel when you make the bourbon. So it's economically beneficial to the bourbon companies to sell it again. Mm -hmm. So the rum companies and the whiskey companies buy those barrels and they age their spirit in those barrels as well. Very similar process. The benefit of drinking something like rum versus whiskey is your price point. So this is a 21-year-old rum. You're looking at about, I think, I can't remember the exact price of it right now, depending on where you are in the world right now. But the price of a 21-year-old rum is significantly less than a 21-year-old yeah. whiskey. Absolutely. Right? So if you're looking at bang for your buck, you know, this can stand up to your favorite whiskey. Like Harmon said, it, I think the Abelure 12 is his favorite whiskey, yeah. right? So if you were to. If we were to get. If you were to purchase to this barrel this bottle off. instead of. Obviously, would you steal this? What happened here? They didn't take it off for us. We bought it to the party, and then we called, we messed, call, called them after it, and they were like, yeah, that's not. Yeah, so shady. So we had so to like, like the first bottle that we got like this. We had to like take a screwdriver. So how are you gonna? What? How are you gonna ever drink this? Yeah, no, we're just gonna get it. <laughs> All right. Then. Well, there you go. The, the, Otherwise, that would have been drank by now. If you were to drink a twelve-year or a twenty-one-year-old rum from the Caribbean, yeah. you would get the same or a similar complexity to something that was aged in Europe or Scotland or Ireland for three times that age, basically. Right. Because wow. in the Caribbean. Things are so much hotter. The temperature in the room where, you know, you're aging the rum, it actually speeds up the maturation process. Okay. So it takes less time, okay. right? less maintenance, brings down the cost. Whereas with a, a Scotch whiskey that's aged for three or like, say forty years, mm. that bottle would be so expensive. Mm -hmm. You're looking at thousands, right? Yeah. And so I always say if you're looking at having a similar whiskey drinking experience, so all the people who drink whiskey, I challenge you right now. You get your favorite bottle of whiskey, then you get El Dorado 21. Put them side by side, or you know some. And you you tell me, or tell these guys, which one is superior. Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you this will stand up to any whiskey out there. This one in particular? Very, yeah. Or just well, the El Dorado 21 is great. Okay. Yeah. It's more expensive. Mm -hmm. I go straight for it whenever an opportunity presents itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's also a 12 and a 15 year old, right? Okay. In terms of bank for your buck, the 12 is pretty damn good, mm -hmm. right? And again, you're looking at two to three times the complexity of, you know, of a whiskey that would be aged for the same amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you know, like you can really do this whenever you want. You grab a whiskey for it, and, and then you tell me what's the better. Then the next time I come back, you say it's Rum Wednesday. Rum Wednesday. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's important. You gotta think of all those things when you're when you're drinking, yeah. because over a period of time, you also want to open up your palate okay. to different course, flavor profiles. Because yeah. you might taste a whiskey and say, "Oh, this one has similarities to that rum we did that one time." Mm -hmm. And originally, you know, the interesting thing about this particular brand is that they have stills that are made of wood, okay. wooden stills. One of them is a coffee still, but the coffee still was originally created or um, invented by an Irishman who was aiming. A really efficient way of uh, distilling Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. Well, in in Guyana, they got this actually, you know. Can I interrupt you for one second? I want you to finish your thought in the accent you were doing off camera, if you can. Because this rum is from Guyana. So yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just finish oh, that yeah, thought. I must know that there, there was a, there's a still man, all right, and still that did is used to make this stuff right here. No, this ting right here. This ting. Guy news would never say stuff. Yeah, this ting right here, they'll say ting like 50 times. And just look and at that, it like, By the way, what? ting is a great drink as well. 
So it's romantic. Yeah. Romantic. Yeah. 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 Romantic. So, I actually love that on that one. so they just use a color copy still. And they just use green heart, man. Green heart is, is the, the material, it's the kind of tree that grow in the interior. Mm-hmm. Why you like that? <laughs> Why you like I love that? it. It's not good? No, no it's, it's really good. It's really yeah. good. Yeah, that's how Irish whiskey. Yeah. The Irish rejected it. They didn't want to use it to produce Irish whiskey. It then was used to produce Scotch. And then, as you know, Guyana was a British colony. British Guyana. <laughs> and they actually built one out of wood because it was efficient. Again, yeah, there was yeah. an abundance of this wood in the interior yeah. because Guyana is located in South America, you know, in the rainforest region. So they use that to build it. And, and what's cool about it is the interaction with wood, with the liquid, with the liquid when it's being distilled, actually lends a very unique flavor profile. Mm-hmm. Almost smoothens it up, as you said. It's a little bit buttery. Yeah. Versus copper. Because a lot of, you know, Irish whiskeys and Scotch whiskeys have a copper still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But back in the day, it wasn't unusual to see wood stills. But the wooden still that they use, that they use to blend some of the other realms in here is called a DHP. Okay. And, um, Get an EHP rum where it's just a single still rum. There's a there's a whole like line of Eldorado. So if you're a whiskey drinker, I always try to kind of open up your mind to trying rum because rum is like the whiskey of the Caribbean. Whiskey of the Caribbean. Yeah. So it ties in. Look at this. See, I told you I made it work. I know. We were we were like rum. You were skeptical. On on wine. What is this? But what's what's the uh, what's what's the jury on this? What's the jury on this? I'm a it's nice. I'm impressed. It's, it's, a, it's a sweeter, it's it's a sweet. sweeter profile. I do like it though. When you say sweeter though, you gotta clarify. This is sweet, like you know, no, no, sugary, no, 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 no. those sugary pours that you put coconut water with. No. You know, this is this is for a refined mm-hmm. palate. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you, like you have. yes, we have refined palate. Clearly, yeah. Refined. Water the nose. <laughs> Any um, questions? Brown sugar too, right? right? Yeah, that's what yeah. I keep getting. I'm like brown sugar, I'm getting. Yeah, it's a Demerara rum. So you've heard of Demerara sugar? Yeah. From the same region. That's, that's they put molasses in brown sugar as well, so that kind of makes sense for those. Well, sugar is, it's interesting that you mentioned that. So sugar is processed. Right? Mm-hmm. It starts with sugar cane, which is also where, you know, rum is distilled from sugar cane. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's sugar cane juice. Sometimes it's molasses, which is a byproduct of sugar cane. Yeah. And so this is made from the sugar cane molasses. And so you will naturally... You know, through that process, as you as you process sugar, you're getting you're going from like the dark to the white, okay. which is super processed. Yeah. The thing with white sugar is you have to add more to um, you have to add less. Sorry, the dark sugar is like demerara or brown sugar. You mm-hmm. gotta add more to those. Sweet, yeah, you get but you get more flavor. Yeah. yeah. So if you were to make a simple syrup, which is water and sugar yeah. combined, you get more flavor from the brown sugar and demerara sugar than you would from the white sugar. Add white sugar yeah. would be more you know, granular. Well, it wouldn't be granular, no, it's just, but it's the flavor wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't get flavor. It's a flat like flavor, it's like one flavor, whereas this has a more rounded profile. Exactly. Um, there's more body to it. That would explain it perfectly. You guys are taxing us. So. Well, on that note, we will now round out the segment by talking about what are we going to talk about? So you're going to tell us a little bit about this movement that's happening. Well, I think all of us were kind of in tune with yeah, hashtag just... Delete Uber, if you guys have heard of it. This was this past week um, <clears throat> when Donald Trump. I, was gonna say I mean, basically, he happened. Trump he has happened. happened. It's, it's, it's driving everyone nuts, I guess. And this Literally. Is, yeah. I think it's just it, yeah, it's the power it's driving of everybody media. nuts, pun intended. Um, so yeah. hashtag delete Uber is just when last Friday there was a protest for Donald Trump's anti-Muslim ban, and uh, at JFK in particular, Uber was still sending drivers there, um, remove the surge pricing, but still sending drivers there. People have now started to download Lyft in protest of deleting Uber, but. Two of Lyft's investors are actually pro-Trump. They're on his advisory board. So board, what so. was weird, what was actually like, I mean, Lyft played this perfectly. They mm-hmm. saw the backlash that was happening Uber. Mind you, Uber CEO, even before this had happened, had put out a statement saying, oh, like, this is bad. He's going to use his position on the Trump's committee to, like, you know, stand for what is right. Mm-hmm. But people just felt his movement of removing surge pricing wasn't enough of a stand. They, yeah. want, they wanted him to do what the taxi did, stop, exactly. right? 
and it wasn't a stand. Lyft just looked at it and they were like, all right, this is our opportunity. And they looked at the, the market at the moment. They were like, okay, we're going to donate a million dollars towards, um, what was it? The a U L U ACLU. ACLU. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, like, it was just marketing one on one. But meanwhile, like you said, Lyft, two of their members are also on that. And people actually kind of didn't even know and are just willy nilly, like, you know. Everyone's just boycotting and jumping yeah. on everything else. I don't know. So it's it's just interesting how powerful social media is and how it ties into all of this that's going on in politics and the world as well and how much of an impact it makes. So um, if you know if you were researching on the hashtag Billy Uber stuff and everything and you want to leave your comments below, be sure to do so and we'll start the conversation there. Um, I just had a question though. What do you think though? Do you think politicians or not politicians companies? Should make social stands, political stands, or not? Um, I think it varies. I, I, I. What? What do you think? I guess it depends on what your your it's mission like statement is, right? Yeah. So, so you say like, okay, well, in this case, like you know, this ban is happening. It's clearly affect, affecting all Americans. Actually, it's affecting people worldwide, right? You're a major company that has, I mean, has you know, a product affecting. Said affected people. If you, you say if something, if you're a, if you're the business owner, yeah, you have total ownership of it. Yeah, the I CEO. think you have. The, you, the CEO, not the business owner. CEOs, they represent the interests of the shareholders. Well, then that's a tough call, right? Yeah, yeah. well, saying. that's why I'm asking because I mean, do you do you make the stand or do you stay neutral? I mean, personally, I. Because being wait, neutral I, is actually some people will say, well, if you're not a part of the solution, you're, you're part, part of the problem. problem. Yeah. Right. There is but some you social said, but, responsibility yeah. depending on the company and depending on the situation, and you step in when necessary. I mean, I, I, because you have that platform and that influence to do so, doesn't mean you necessarily always have to do so. I mean, I think like social respons responsibility is important, mm -hmm. but I also see where someone would turn to like maybe a board member would turn to them like being neutral sometimes also means going under the radar. Yeah. And so, I mean, I personally would be like, no, I just take a stand. And if that but affects my bottom line, like yes. it affects my bottom line. But I, I, I think we have to, uh, I would align whatever said company with the right side. Because at the end, like that's who I am, right? Yeah. But at the same time, as a business decision, what's the right thing? Are you willing to lose customers over that? Because you're, you're well, you might to, gain customers. You, you might customers. gain more loyal customers. Exactly. Right. So... Leave us your thoughts, leave us your comments on what we just discussed today. Um, so we, and we talked about the whiskey of the Caribbean. The whiskey of the Caribbean. If you guys have tried El Dorado 21 year, let us know. Uh -huh. And if you have any other rums in this family that you want to try. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And most importantly, we're talking about social responsibility. Social. With Uber, make sure that you drive safely yes. or you have a driver when you are. That was smoother than this one. When you are drinking. No, I'm not saying drive safely when you're drinking. I'm saying <laughs> drive somebody else drive responsibly. safely. Drive responsibly. And drink responsibly. Else. Yeah. Drink responsibly. So if you don't use Uber, use the taxis, guys. Yeah. Taxis still exist. Yeah. Or shout out to TGC, the Toronto taxi Public guys. transit's good too. TGC. Transit, yeah. Even though they're pricing some, like how many seven million dollars to get on the bus now? So. Seven million. Hey man, listen, we, we <laughs> complain about that yeah. stuff, but you go to other places Gosh, in the world and they've got way worse transit Gosh, problems. Really than we do. Man, it's really yeah. Bad. Just gonna suck it up and have another. I'm just gonna walk. Or walk it home. <laughs> walk it. And I'll, I'll make it back next week. <laughs> See you next week, Kev. Well, this was uh, Whiskey Website Wednesday. Thank you again, Trevor, for joining us. This was amazing. Thank you again for the rum, the whiskey of the Caribbean. You're and uh, again, if you have any questions for us, think at us at the box.com. I am Yara. This is Gab. This is Trevor. Be sure to connect with us, and we will see you guys next week. Drinking. I'm pointing at this. Was that? Oh, right. Oh, yeah, we're pointing at this. Peace out, guys. <laughs>